I did not expect this release just one week before the FJS, but here we are, Expo released SDK 51, which includes React Native 0.74, and also a bunch of other things that we're gonna talk about. Let's quickly dive into this so you don't have to read through the release notes, although for everyone interested, I highly recommend you check them out. Quick word up front about the new architecture. The new architecture in React Native is rolling out in 2024, and I'm gonna do a separate video on all these things, including what bridgeless means and what the new architecture in general is about. Just notice for now that with SDK 51, Expo is moving closer to that target uh, of the new architecture in React Native. And you can also test this right now. There will be some issues, but overall you can test things out. Okay. Besides that, I want to jump over a few things and usually I piece together what I think makes the most sense. I will not go through all of this um, in the order of that post, but follow my own scheme. So. The first thing I want to let you know is that there is a new default template. So if you just create a new Expo application, what is the command that I use? Uh, create Expo app uh, new release dash T default. And probably we can relief, uh, get rid of that if it's like the default. I shouldn't supply it anyway. But anyway, this is the new template. It comes with this pretty cool parallax view. Uh, and those two components, it is using, of course, Expo file-based routing um, and has some pretty cool things, actually. As I said, Parallax, that's pretty cool. And there's also like this uh, collapsible component included. And if you check out the repository uh, or the code in your application, you're going to notice that uh, next to those cool components, there's also a hooks folder and also a scripts folder with a reset project script. So if you don't like what you see or you just want to start fresh, you can run the scripts command. I don't know if I regret this, uh, but I will do it. Okay, and voila, you come back basically instantly to the default app with an index file and a layout file, the most simple uh, app you can have with Expo. And still, we still got the app example stuff going on here. So if you want to get that back, uh, how did it look before? I have no idea. Can I just drag it in back in here? Oh, I'm getting into React Native hell for this. Uh, let's reload. Um, the index should probably be gone. And then we are uh, almost back. Well, <laughs> uh, probably there are a few things that are not exactly like they were before. Uh, although actually it should be. I, I just messed up the header here. So uh, run the reset script if you want to get rid of this or use it like it is. And there's also a new doc section in, in the documentation. Now you can check out if you like these fancy things of uh, how to get started. So you know, click, uh, I'm using an iOS simulator and I would like to use a development build. So uh, I don't want to use this. And then there are the exact commands you need to follow. Check this out if you're interested in uh, getting started. But probably if you're watching this video, you are already way past that point. Now let's talk about new uh, packages. In the last release in the Expo SDK 50, uh, they released a new Expo Camera uh, and Expo SQLite slash Next package. These are now moving into the default, which means Expo Camera Next is now the default Expo Camera and Expo SQLite Next is now the default Expo SQLite, which also implies that everything these packages were previously is now legacy, which means you can access them from Expo Camera slash legacy. These packages are pretty cool. We might dive more into them at a later point. In fact, I'm working on a ChatGPT clone that might drop pretty soon and we're using the new Expo SQLite package and I can promise you it is pretty great. Next to that, there's a new package that I definitely did not <laughs> expect, and that's the Expo Symbols package. Currently, iOS only package using the SF Symbols library. If you haven't seen this, these are like iOS specific fonts. There is actually on a Mac an application called SF Symbols that you can install, and then you can search through all these beautiful different icons and their glorious names like iPhone, radio waves, left and right circle. Um, I actually got in touch with them first time using Zigo, which we will also use in the upcoming ChatGPT clone, a library by Fernando Rojo for drop down menus and context menus. He, as always, was ahead of his time by using uh, the SF symbols for the native menus. 
Um, there is also another new package that we should talk about and this is why I now have to jump a bit down here. Uh, and that's the beta release of a new Expo video library. Uh-huh, okay. So Expo is working on an improved version of the previous Expo AV plugin and Expo video seems to be the new one. It is currently in beta, you can give it a try. If you're interested in more about this plugin, let me know in the comments and we're gonna do a deep dive. I think this is going to be a promising plugin and certainly one that will help many, many people. And finally, speaking of packages, um, the Expo Acid config plugin now also allows us to specify different assets and these will be available as native resources. Um, so this is important if you try to access certain files, images or whatever from native modules, this is highly important because otherwise your app might crash. That's everything for the packages. Let's move on to the next one. You know, we're always doing these fast paced in need to give you a quick overview about what's going on. Expo Router, my big love. So Expo Router version 3.5 dropped. I talked with Evan on the Rocket Ship podcast. You should definitely listen to that episode. Gonna put a link down uh, in the description. Uh, there will be another release, Expo Router version 4, as far as I understood. And once we hit version 4, we will also see a, probably a renaming of Expo Router into something more generic. Just be aware of that. So for version 3.5, there are some improvements. Um, actually, pretty interesting ones. So. Uh, support for hash, oh, oops, support for the hash segments in URL with cons hash use local, uh, new router functions for dismissing routes. Then what I think was really good move, removed expo request and expo response objects in favor of built in winter CG compliant uh, request response objects. This is talking uh, about the API routes. We've quickly touched them before, actually not too much. Maybe we should do this again. So if you have sort of an API folder and then you have a Simon plus, uh, Simon plus API.ts file, you now can use the default, oh yeah, thanks, bear. Uh, the default request and request, uh, request and response objects. You don't have to use the expo request and response anymore, which some people found kind of strange. I agree, this looks a lot better. Besides that, there's an interesting change as well. Um, support for platform specific extensions for routes and layout files. Okay, you know that you can have like a mycomponent.ios.tsx. This sounds like we can now have a underscore layout.ios.ts, which will look in a specific way on iOS. So if I now copy this over to my new uh, layout.ios file, this should actually, uh, this should be a tsx file. This should actually apply to my application. Um, maybe we can test this out. Oh, it works. And I do, I am inside my layout ios.tsx. I'm using a custom header title foo and it shows up here. So this means you can have platform specific layout files and routes in your Expo Router file. This is a pretty good release. Uh, they should make bigger noise of this because this is actually pretty cool. So uh, go check out that stuff regarding Expo Router. Uh, Evan also did put out a tweet. Of course, I lost reference to it, um, but they're now improving the deep linking capabilities. So you can now have something like a native intent.ts file here, which will handle deep linking besides the default behavior of Expo Router. Let me know again in the comments if you're interested in learning more about that. Okay, that's everything for Expo Router. Let's talk about some Expo tools. Uh, first, probably EAS. They previously announced this rollout feature in which you can, can we just have this a bit bigger? Open image in new tab. Um, where you can basically specify to how many people or what percentage of people you want to roll out a specific new branch. This has now a web preview. Previously, this was only available through the CSI. And I think as I've talked with Aaron Bereskin before, this is a pretty important uh, update for many companies that just want to test out a new feature for a certain amount of people before rolling this out to everyone. Besides that, let's quickly talk about Expo Go. I mentioned this in the previous video when Expo SDK 50 came around. 
you don't want to rely on Expo Go anymore. Expo Go is great. You can quickly test something, but with Expo 51, there's now only one uh, SDK supported. So if you know the latest Expo Go application, it will only support Expo SDK 51. You are far better off with development builds. Quick word about that in a second. If you still want to rely on Expo Go, um, they have a new tool here or at Expo Go dot or Expo dot dev slash go. Uh, you can get a specific version of the Expo Go app. If your app is using that version, then you can download it. This does not work for a physical iOS device because the, the Apple Play Store and stuff, you know. But for all the other platforms, for emulators, simulators, you can get a specific Expo Go version for a specific SDK in case you still want that. I definitely recommend go with pre-builds, go with continuous native generation. It is super easy. I'm working on a video that covers all the different steps of how you can build your Expo project should will be released soon and I hope this will answer a lot of questions. One more thing, they also released a beta version of Expo Go for Windows. Um, I really like the uh, Expo Orbit application. It's a short uh, simple application you can install and I sometimes just launch my simulator with it but in a company you can like directly install a specific EAS build through Expo Orbit which shows up in that list and deploy it to your simulator or share something it is really really great and everyone on Windows I highly recommend you check out Expo Orbit for Mac it has been available for a bit longer already. Just a few more things that I want to mention I would put them under quality of life improvement so for iOS, there's the requirement for a specific string in your privacy manifest. And now with a config plugin, basically um, you can include this in your app JSON. So this is how it could look like for the privacy manifest. You can include specific information with Expo. Should be pretty easy. Uh, did they mention this somewhere here? Yeah, I think here's the Apple privacy manifest. You can read more about this. Not too interesting, but if you encounter this as a problem, this is going to be great for you. Then we do have an ESLint config plugin. So I can now run npx expo lint. Let's see, uh, can I do this? Let's put this a bit bigger. npx, okay, probably not uppercase, npx expo lint. And this will generate a new ESLint config. Would you like to install and configure this in the project? Yes. Looks like ESLint has now been configured. I don't know why I didn't have this before, but now it should actually work. Okay, so there's a new uh, new command you can run. Um, then uh, just a few handful of things more. So one thing is that you can now use all package managers. You can use BunX, PNPM, Yarn, and of course NPX to create an Expo application. I actually just tried BUN and had some problems with something related to reanimated. I don't know if it's, uh, it's probably just me because usually BUN is pretty great. Um, just notice that you could usually use all of these right now. And what I definitely like, and I think this was actually available through Xcode before, is that you can now run, when you call NPX Expo run iOS dash dash device, you can, if you see this little globe here, deploy to your iOS device over the network, which totally makes sense. We have good network, we don't need that damn USB cable. Um, so you can now just directly deploy to your device over the network. And the last thing, probably not the, the least thing, or definitely not the least thing, this is, I rewrote the Metro Resolver in Espo XDK, classic Evan Bacon, of course. Uh, I just rewrote the whole thing. So up to six times faster, super fast when restarting the CLI. Try it today. We just have to use Expo use fast resolver equals one NPX Expo. Totally uh, intuitive command. <laughs> let's see. Um, we probably need a little benchmark. So let's run NPX Expo once. Okay, now it's ready. Mm, yeah, well, it, it's pretty fast. Let's do it with this uh, with a fast resolver. Uh, uh, uh. It's uh, it's noticeable. Okay, this is the default project, and it's a very small project. But I feel like the 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 difference here is already noticeable, and I'm pretty sure if you're in a bigger project, this has a tremendous impact on how you build your application. So. Give it a try. Uh, I don't know what is breaking or what might break here or, or if this is working in all the scenarios, but thanks to Evan again for pushing the boundaries as always.
And with that, I think we've covered the most important pieces. There are a few more little nuggets in between the lines that you can read. So I will put the uh, release notes in the description. Let me know what you think is the best about Expo SDK 51. I certainly like a lot of the small things like the new packages, camera SQLite, the, the new thing for uh, Expo AV, the symbols, um, but also that we're moving closer to the new architecture. And if you want to learn more about that, just let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure the concept is still not completely clear to everyone and I'm happy to dive deeper into what all of these fancy words mean. Hope you enjoy the new release. If you want to learn more about React Native, as always, check out galaxies.dev, my platform to help you with all the things React Native and stay subscribed for big, massive videos over uh, the next week, we're gonna have a ChatGPT clone. We have a video about Expo build things. So a lot of interesting stuff coming soon and I will catch you in the next one. Until then, happy coding, Simon.